While growing up, Gwendolyn Christie was told she'd never be able to achieve her dreams because of her height. However, after being on one of the most successful TV shows in history, the actress has proved that not only can she accomplish whatever she wants, but also break gender roles in the process. Gwendolyn Christie was born in England and received a strict education where she was supposed to be quiet and intelligent. As a child, she was passionate about dancing and gymnastics. However, when she was 11, Gwendolyn injured her back and had to end her sporting career. According to the actress herself, she was being overcoached and she was also growing very fast. My body decided that was it, no more, she told Stylist Magazine. Christie then decided that she wanted to be an actress. Soon she became obsessed with classical works and Shakespeare. I was growing very quickly and was told that I couldn't, I couldn't do it anymore. Okay. And I was 11 and I just decided, okay, I'll be an actor. When she was older, she began her studies at London's prestigious drama center. In drama school, the performer was told she'd never get work because of her height and androgynous look. The actress is six foot three, which equals to 190 centimeters. When she was younger, Gwendolyn had been bullied for her unconventional appearance. Christie has explained her routine at Drama Center, saying that she used to work 12 hours a day, seven days a week. I was told I was rubbish every day, she revealed. Apparently, the purpose was to prepare her for the amount of rejection she would get working as an actress. The performer believes it's important to shake up beauty standards, which doesn't mean that the constant judgment doesn't get to her. Gwendolyn found the initial rejections very frustrating. At one point, she thought, I'll give this another six months, and if this persists, I'll become a nun. Despite the initial difficulties, the Game of Thrones alum jokes about her height now. Yeah, you know, it's not so easy to hide. She told Harper's Bazaar that at bars, she's able to catch the bartender's eye more easily and get her drink quickly. I also have a selfie stick arm, she added. While studying, Christy made a bold move to come to terms with her body. She collaborated with photographer Polly Borland and on a nude photo shoot. At the time, the collaboration was exciting for the young actress. However, now that she's older, she's shocked that she gave so much of herself and confessed to Stylist Magazine that she wouldn't do the same now. During all this initial discouragement, there was another celebrity that inspired Gwendolyn to continue fighting for her dreams, Academy Award winner Tilda Swinton. Christy realized that Swinton also had a physique unlike other actors. I realized that maybe there is a place for me too, the actress said. At that point, the future star had done a lot of theater but realized she wanted to work on screen and told her agent. What did he say? Good luck with that. Gwendolyn started getting some work in films like The Imaginarium of Dr. Parnassus and plays like Breakfast at Tiffany's and Skin Deep. Then, fans started noticing the actress's resemblance to Game of Thrones character Brienne of Tarth and began speculating that she would play her in the upcoming HBO show. Christie wasn't familiar with the character but decided to look into it. Upon finding out more about Brienne, Gwendolyn thought the character could change the way we view women on television. When the time to audition came, the performer gave it her all. She attended the casting in character and wearing armor. The producers decided to cast her right away. According to the original book's author, George R.R. R. Martin, we looked at a dozen actresses who were reading for Brienne and one actress who was Brienne. Roll up, roll up, welcome to the greatest show on earth, Game of Thrones. Brienne defies archetypal notions of femininity, which Gwendolyn believes is vitally important. The actress has confessed that, at times, she has felt pretty genderless because of her size, so she wants to challenge prejudices. I think it's important to have great male and female heroines for all genders to look up to. Uh, we live in a world that is 50% women, 50% men, as far as I can tell, and it's no secret that our entertainment has been predominantly male-driven, and I think it's time to rejuvenate the narrative. Christie also told Nylon Magazine all the things she adores about the character. She is an outsider. She's someone who has been maligned for the way that she looks, and she's overcome that obstacle, the Emmy Award nominee said. Gwendolyn knew that Game of Thrones would become an incredible representation of women. The star told the People Slash Entertainment Weekly Network that the show would put women at the forefront. We were going to explore female characters in a way that conventionally doesn't happen. We would explore their darkness, and we would spend more time on them. The actress went on to say that women in Game of Thrones wouldn't just exist as the mother, girlfriend, sister, or wife role. What we've seen is a patriarchal viewpoint of how men believe women should be, and we haven't been allowed an awful lot of other variation with regards to women or men 
or all sorts of people. And I feel that Brienne of Tarth is, uh, inhabits the role of the classic outsider. To prepare for the part, Gwendolyn had to put a lot of work into her physical appearance. She lost about 14 pounds and underwent physical training to get into the right condition. She also trained in sword fighting and horse riding. And of course, she studied the books in detail. I really love the opportunity to transform. I really do. And um, I'm hugely grateful to the life-changing experience I had playing Brienne of Tarth in Game of Thrones. When explaining why she put in so much work, the performer said, I don't think I've ever wanted anything as much. The actress has no problem fighting for what she wants, so much so that in 2019 she decided to submit herself for Emmy after HBO didn't. The network wanted to think strategically. They were worried that if they submitted all the series regulars in Game of Thrones, they would cancel each other out. Each submission also came with a fee. Because of this, some actors self-submitted and paid the fee themselves. Gwendolyn confessed to the LA Times that although she found this hard to do, that she would like to be in charge of her own destiny. The actress wanted to give herself opportunities, especially after working so hard. And I had to do it as a testament to the character and what I feel she represents, Christie said. Gwendolyn made the right call and got nominated that year, along with co-stars Alfie Allen and Karis Van Houten, who had also submitted themselves. Other co-stars that HBO had submitted also earned nominations. After beginning work in Game of Thrones, Christy also got a part in Jane Campion's Top of the Lake, China Girl. The performer had been a fan of the director's work since she was 11. When she watched the first series of Top of the Lake, she felt really touched, so much so that she wrote Campion a letter telling her how much she appreciated her work. Four months after receiving the letter, Jane called Gwendolyn and told her, I've been dreaming about you. I've written you a lead part in my new series. I hope you can do it. This, of course, was a dream come true for the actress. The experience was so incredible that Christy couldn't help but have an emotional moment during the show's premiere at the Cannes Film Festival. When she was walking the stairs, Gwendolyn felt lucky to have a career as an artist after being told that she wouldn't. And I didn't stop crying for two hours, to the point that people actually became quite bored with it. <laughs> And we're saying, she's still crying? Yeah, she's still crying. She's still crying? Yeah, she's still going. And they, even I think, like, even I'm bored with this. I cannot stop crying. When she was about to start sobbing, Jane gave her a look that said, pull yourself together. And when the actress turned around for the photo, she wasn't crying. More recently, the actress has managed to land a role in Netflix's commercial success Wednesday. The Emmy Award nominee has admitted that the part made her feel beautiful. She also saw iconic actors like Tippi Hedren and Kim Novak for inspiration. Christy has not only managed to find success in work, she's very happy in her personal life as well. The actress is dating fashion designer Giles Deacon, who not only supports her but also sees her as his muse. Deacon has worked with leading brands and celebrities. In 2016, he launched his own haute couture collection. Giles has worked for the British royal family. He designed Pippa Middleton's wedding dress in 2017. Before Giles and Gwendolyn started dating, they were good friends. However, the designer has confessed that it was love at first sight for him. I was instantly smitten, he told Grazia UK. Deacon explained that the way the actress carried herself was unlike anything he had ever seen before. Finally, romance bloomed between the two on New Year's Eve 2012. Since then, they have collaborated on a few projects. I'm, I'm not sure what was happening, but I thought, wow, isn't the world incredible? The actress got a role in a London production of A Midsummer Night's Dream, and Giles designed two dresses for her performance. Christy is a fan of her boyfriend's talent and praises his mind-bending designs. You always feel celebrated as a woman when you wear them. Their confidence somehow increases yours, she told The Telegraph. Deacon later revealed that the actress was the primary inspiration for his first couture collection. She's a fantastic muse, he added. Gwendolyn regularly wears Giles' pieces on Hollywood red carpets, especially at the Emmys. She has continued praising the designer over the years. He's an extraordinary person. He works with such great sensitivity, the actress told Vogue magazine. Gwendolyn and Giles have been together for over 10 years, and it seems like they are able to make each other happy. So far, neither of them has mentioned getting married, so we don't know if that's in the cards for them. However, we are sure that whatever happens in the future, Gwendolyn will continue working hard and fighting for what she believes in, like she's always done. Whatever happens here at Rumor Juice, we want to wish them both many more successes and a lifetime of happiness. Be well and be kind.